area which it's kind of white trash it really is you drive through Clinton Township you roll down your windows I roll them down because I have an old car you roll down your windows and you smell nothing but pee and bacon <laughs> I love that and you know what and I love living there because I'm kind of white trash and I like coming home after work and take my bra off and put a t-shirt on, put my pajamas on, slippers, and then go shopping. <laughs> God, people in Clinton Township wear pajamas to the store. I'm telling you, when I went to, I went to the Secretary of State, they all had pajamas on. When I did, I felt like I was in a sleepover. <laughs> I'm standing in line, I'm braiding the girl in front of me, her hair. We had a little pillow fight. We made out. That really doesn't happen, and it really doesn't. So, I have a 17-year-old son, and he comes home and he asks if his girlfriend can sleep over. I'm not kidding, you know, with me and his father home, and I said, well, maybe if we had some nanny cams around, I'd be open to it. But I said no, and he said, well, you know, all my buddy's parents let him do it. And I'm like, really? I mean, is that kind of fucked up a little bit? How about those parents sitting there watching television? Honey, Junior's upstairs, is having a little sleepover. <laughs> Yes, that's him. You hear banging the shit out of his girlfriend. Oh. I know they're really going at it. Oh, honey, shh, listen. I think she had an orgasm. Look out for her. Oh my gosh, I think she came twice. Honey, I told you he was good at something. <laughs> oh, oh, wait. What, darling? Oh, yes, I just bought you a new tube. It's in your top drawer. Have fun. Looks like our little boy is a backdoor man. <laughs> grew up with some really old school parents, uh, like to tell us how hard they worked. Me and my sister became smart asses for it. My mom would always, we'd come home from school, me and my sister, my mom would always let us know, you know, it feels like I did like 70 loads of laundry today. Mom, you work for a fucking laundromat, shut up. <laughs> my dad wasn't any better too. He was super old school. When I was six, my mom thought I was allergic to bees. So he found a bee farm, he threw me in the middle of it. Bullerp you moody boy. <laughs> when I was 10, my mom thought I was allergic to peanuts. So he went out and bought me tubs and tubs of peanut butter. Forced me to eat it. He's like, Bullerp you moody boy. <laughs> so when I was 14, I thought I'd be another smart ass. I went up to him, going through puberty. I was like, Dad, think I'm allergic to pussy. <laughs> <laughs> He looks me square in the face, he says, yeah, I figured. <laughs> no, that's okay. You ever think of those comebacks, you know, when it's like too late to use it? But I don't care. No, eight years later, I'm in my 20s, living with my girlfriend. I call my dad up. I'm like, hey, dad, remember when I told you I thought I was allergic to pussy? He's like, yeah, I've been expecting this phone call. <laughs> I said, no. I actually know I'm allergic to pussy. He says, how's that, son? I say, because every time I'm around my girlfriend's pussy, my dick swells up really big. <laughs> <laughs> Today, you guys, I got 
called a faggot, which uh, isn't really a surprise. I'm just glad my dad is returning my phone calls again. <laughs> How I miss that hateful voice of his. Uh, last night, I was trimming my beard, and I noticed that I had some gray hairs in it, which is weird, because it's been so long since I've blown an old guy. <laughs> And by long, I mean his balls were. <laughs> right. Have you ever visited a glory hole and thought, Dad, is that you? No, oh, I know. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Earlier today, you guys, I got called a faggot, which uh, isn't really a surprise. I'm just glad my dad is returning my phone calls again. <laughs> Uh, how I miss that hateful voice of his. Uh, last night, I was trimming my beard, and I noticed that I had some gray hairs in it, which is weird, because it's been so long since I've blown an old guy. <laughs> and by long, I mean his balls were. <laughs> right. Have you ever visited a glory hole and thought, Dad, is that you? No, oh, I know. Yeah, that's true. Wow. That's true. I'm a proud father of four beautiful children. I have three in their twenties. Have a daughter. Thanks for clapping for my sperm. I have a uh, beautiful sperm. I'll show you later. Uh, <laughs> I have a daughter and two sons in their 20s. I have a little six-year-old that showed up my stroke ain't broke. And, um, <laughs> and, and peep this, ladies. You know, it's, it's bad that you guys have had the kids that changes your bodies and all that other stuff. But look, let me hear you guys or something. Your men aren't going anywhere. They love you for whatever body you, you just kicked out a kid for them. You know, you just shit out a kid. So they're not going anywhere, you know? But if you don't love your bodies, how are we gonna love you? You hate them, we hate them too. You know? You know what I mean? And like, when my girl, she had these kids and all that, you know, she used to have like pert, ample bosoms. They used to sit up there like that. They're all big and firm. I used to bat at them like a kitten batting at yard. You know? I had fun. I used to motorboat the shit out of them. You know? And then she had these kids and they're suckling on them and they drop down and get all droopy. And she's sad about that shit. And listen, listen, lady. Listen. Listen. This is what I did to, to get her to feel better about herself. Instead of motorboating them, now I sailboat them. <laughs> sailboat them. And if you don't know what that is, this is what it is. It's, what I do is I grab both nipples and I pull them out. <laughs> and then I blow really, really hard into them until they pop out like a sail on a sailboat. Shit is awesome. When I role play, I put on like a patch and pretend to be a pirate. Shit is badass. That's right. That's right. Cap, Cap Morgan right there, he knows. He knows that shit. How many of you women in here are booed up? How many of you women in here with your men right now? Or have a man? Round of applause. Y'all some lonely bitches during this time, man. God damn. Well, then I'm just going to talk to you women who, are, who have men. Listen. Um, a little word of advice. Stay the fuck off of Pinterest. Stay off of Pinterest, ladies. That shit will ruin your relationship. It will. It will ruin your relationship. And if, for you guys that don't know what Pinterest is, it's basically like a porn site for women. It has like arts and crafts and shit and clothes and all that stupid bullshit and dumb recipes. But this is how it's going to ruin your relationship. Hear me out. This is how it's going to ruin it, ladies. Crock pot. Listen, that bullshit is not cooking. Crock potting is not cooking. It's not cooking. Hell, it even has the word crock in it. It's a crock of shit. It's not cooking. Don't argue with me about this shit. Let me tell you what cooking is. My mother, she's, she cooks. She cooks. You know what my mother do, does? She goes and she chops up the recipe, you know, chops up the ingredients, and she puts the spices in, and she lets this pot boil while she's cooking this in the stove, and all of this stuff has to be put together and all that for her family. She used to hook it up. That's cooking. And you know how we would reward her? We would eat all that shit up and watch her clean that shit up after she got done, like a woman's supposed to. And... <laughs> 
right. Don't get mad because my household was ran right. And uh, don't be upset about that shit. Because seriously, thank you, thank you, people who have common sense. Because listen, listen, crockpot is not cooking. Like, do your crockpot bitches even know how to turn on the stove now? That's my new term, crockpot bitches. You can hashtag that, shit will pop up. Seriously, do you even know how to turn on the stove? Because you guys think you can cook anything in lasagna and cobbler and ice cream, all kinds of crazy shit in a crock pot. But you can't. So listen, ladies, let me tell you how, how you can get over. Listen, if you're committed to that, let, let me do this now. If you're committed to that, let me tell you how you get over on it. When you bring your man with one of these bullshit dishes out of a crock pot, at least give him head so he can think that you, he can forget all about you even knowing how to cook. You know, he's like, oh, baby, Rice Krispies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. Keep going. And I told that joke recently, and this woman came up to me after the show, and she was like, you know that crockpot joke? I got a bone to pick with you. I was like, yeah, bitch, there's probably some succulent meat on that bone, too, at one point. Because you crockpotted it to death. Crockpot is bullshit, is all I'm saying. <laughs>
guess I should call her my ex-girlfriend now. Because I had to break up with her. I just could not watch another episode of The Bachelor. It sucks. Um, that's not a funny joke. <laughs> I like to get high and clean my apartment. Just kidding. I do not clean my apartment. Let's get high. What do you think a gay porn star says when his shoot's canceled? Well, that's a load off my back. You know, I think we live in a really wonderful place. I mean, the planet Earth. I think it's awesome. Um, but every once in a while, I think that Earth was kind of like God's homework assignment. And he had seven days to do it. And he was working really hard. You know, he got a lot of stuff done in six days. But that's Saturday night. The guy made weed. <laughs> Next morning, St. Peter's knocking on the door. Um, Mr. Yahweh, sir, uh, we have a lot of work to do today. You guys just sit on the couch watching TV. <laughs> What's up, Peter? You want to hit this? <laughs> That's cool. No, no, but Mr. Mr. Yahweh, um, you were going to uh, make it so that there were no languages and that anyone could communicate with anyone and there would be no wars. You were going to create a superfood so that there would never be a starving children ever and you were going to desalinate the oceans so that there would always be clean water for everyone to drink. And you were going to look at the platypus again. <laughs> Damn! Fuck it, man. I'm gonna get an A. I'm resting. And then he got Mary pregnant. And like any child of a broken home, Jesus didn't really know where to turn. Um, Damn. He turned to substances, of course. I can't tell you how many times Mary caught him in the garage with the three wise men, drinking some Bacardi gold, burning some of Frank's incense because they were smoking some marijuana. <laughs> Mary comes in, she's like, Jesus, you know what? If you keep doing that stuff, they're going to put nails in your hands and feet. Then what are you going to do? He's like, fuck you, Mom. Whatever. I know you're not a virgin. Dad told me. <laughs> So Bill Clinton got a lot of shit for a little head, right? <laughs> Cockergate is ridiculous. I mean, we yeah, Cockergate. <laughs> we put a man on trial for getting his fucking dick sucked. Like, he's got the hardest job in the world. He just spent two years begging people to get the hardest job in the world. One's gonna make his hair gray. And he's never gonna be the yeah. same person again. He, he, all his time is dedicated to this job. Don't you think an award is in order? <laughs> I don't know. Like a blowjob. <laughs> I think when you become president, they take you down into the secret vault. And they sit you on a stool across from the most beautiful woman there is in the land. She's got big fucking tits, you know? And she, go, she has a big book in her hand. And she says, all right, you're president. This is the book of secrets. Anything you want to know. Who built the pyramids? Illuminati? Aliens? It's all in here. Or, you can have a blowjob. I think we know what Kennedy said. I'll take the blowjob! Then George Bush, he's like, well, I already have a gardener, and I don't read, so no thank you. <laughs> but I think, I think things are looking up, guys. I think they're looking up. Because Obama took the book. He took the book. And then he goes, baby, your mouth is too small. <laughs> Do you think black squirrels have bigger dicks than regular squirrels?
myself. I'm standing in line at the gas station looking at one of those scratch-off lottery tickets, and I'm fantasizing about what I would do with that $50 if I won. Oh my god. <laughs> standing in line like, man, dude, I could buy me a hoodie, take my girl to a nice meal of Panera Bread, right? Be pretty fantastic. I can't even imagine if I won the Mega Millions, I'd lose my goddamn mind. That shit would break me. Like, that afternoon, you would find me dressed up in, like, a white suit, a top hat, and a cane. Just like, this is just how I look now, you guys. That's it. Like, this is the new me. I'd also have a monkey. Of course I have a monkey. Right? A monkey. That monkey, by the way, white suit, top hat, cane, maybe a diamond grill. We'll see. Um, but what pisses me off is a lot of these people who will be like, Oh yeah, well, you know, if I won the lottery, I'd still keep working my job. <laughs> Gotta keep the mind busy. First of all, fuck you. You don't deserve the money there. <laughs> Second of all, that is literally the saddest thing I've heard in my entire life. Are you telling me that your identity as a middle manager at Applebee's is so important to you, so fundamental to who you are, that even if you won $100 million, you would still keep your shit-ass job? I think the first time your alarm clock goes off at 6 o'clock in the morning, you're reevaluating that decision. <laughs> like, shit. Actually, actually, I think I'd rather sleep in until noon and then take a plane to Jamaica. I'm gonna go smoke weed with Snoop Dogg. Those are my plans. Okay? And, um, you can of money too. You, th God damn, a hundred million dollars? You can do some bad shit, crazy shit with that shit. You can fucking fill up a pool full of golden coins. Like, like Scrooge McDuck. You can Scrooge McDuck that shit. But, fair warning, if you do that, do not dive into that pool. Because one thing that DuckTales neglected to mention was that um, <laughs> the sound of somebody diving headfirst into a pool full of coins is like this. That's it. There's no whoosh. It's just, and you're dead. That's it. Um, Alright, and I'll leave you guys with this. I'm pissed off because I recently got busted for some weed. And I gotta tell you guys, I fucking hate the cops. This isn't even a joke. I hate them. They're terrible. Um, but I believe that everybody hates the cops. And I believe that you can do that, prove this with one simple test. Ask anybody in this room, by round of applause, if anybody feels differently, let me know. When you are driving down the road and a cop pulls up behind you, do you go, oh my god, thank god, I feel very protected right now. Or do you go, oh shit, there's a cop behind me. <laughs> super long and I got in the mirror and was like, fuck, I look like Millie Vanilli. <laughs> All I need is some green contacts and an orange blazer and some fucking shoulder pads. Girl, you know it's true. <laughs> survivor, y'all. Don't clap too fast. I still drink, smoke weed periodically. I'm a work in progress. Don't judge me. But it's funny because um, I was just uh, reading not too long ago that if you, is it like 20 minutes? If you spend 20 minutes sucking titties, so guys, suck more titties. Um, you spend 20 minutes sucking titties, that lessens your chance of getting breast cancer. Did you know that? Hell, if I would have known that, I would have had all my fucking partners suck my titties for 20 minutes. I mean, you know, that's 40 minutes of work, though. I mean, you got all night. You might as well suck a titty for all night. I mean, you got to do both, right? That's 40 minutes. That's a long fucking session. Shit. That's a whole fucking session. 
I mean, it gets it done in 20 minutes. Oh, <laughs> me. Titty sucking and fucking. <laughs> He's a pro. But it's funny because now I'm single, which really oh fucking God. sucks. But oh, I gotta backtrack because I gotta get back to 20 minute titty sucking. So let's backtrack. <laughs> so this guy gave me an ultimatum. He was like, Okay, either I'm gonna suck the titty for 20 minutes or I'll give you head for 20 minutes. Now, you know, I had to think about this shit because, you know, do I wanna reduce the chances of getting breast cancer in my other titty? Or do I wanna get a possible, do I wanna enjoy a possible orgasm? I mean, I ended up rejecting it because I'm like, I can do a little bit of meow, 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 and I'll take care of myself. Hell no! Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? Ladies? You know what I mean? Anybody else do the meow, 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 meow? And um, so I passed on that one. But um, I'm under reconstruction now, so I got the lopsided thing going on. Oh, damn. It's temporary. Okay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> But um, I said, you know, that'll be a good one for um, the uh, guys that uh, don't know. You know, if you want to turn the lights on, surprise. <laughs> surprise, motherfucker. I got to anchor these bitches to keep them even. You don't know that until the lights come on. Hey, boom. But it's funny when you tell different races that you have breast cancer because everybody responds different. Like the black girls, they always offer prayer and they're always like, you know, do you have to have, do you have to have your titty removed? And I'm like, yeah, I'm a bitch, like, yeah, I gotta have my fucking titty. <laughs> it's real, I'm here. <laughs> and the white girls, they always wanna feel. Are you done? Can I feel? Oh my God. <laughs> I can feel this shit. Which one is real, which one is fake? I'm like, yes. And the Mexican girls, they're like, ay Dios mío, mommy, you can die from that. She was always dramatic. You're always gonna fucking die. It's all good though, it's all good. Titties are under construction, so they will be perky and fresh. This one's brand new, though. This is the brand new one. This, this is perky. Yeah. 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 I like to think so. The other one's gonna be even in about a week, gotcha. and we'll be good to go. Then I'm gonna get on like a nude beach and walk around naked. I don't care, scars and all. Fuck that. The fat people on the beach, I mean, shit. Awesome. You're great. White girl, you're great. <laughs> love that shit. White people are so enthusiastic. I love you guys. You know what? I tell you what. Why, and I love, I love my white friends because they're the only ones that I can borrow money from and not pay them back and they're still my friends. They're still my friends. I love that shit. I can't do that shit with my people. $20 and I'm in fucking debt. But um, it's all good. I um, I actually came up with a, a, a titty joke. Y'all want to hear my shit? Yeah. Okay, what do y'all call a pair of lopsided titties? <laughs> High lows. <laughs> it took me forever to come up with that quick line. I was like, I have to come up with a titty joke. I mean, seriously. I mean, I'm always talking about the realistic shit. I need like a punchline joke. That's the punchline joke. But I'm on face Facebook. I call it fuckbook. Um, Twitter. Twinkies and uh, Instagram. So hit up Danny Redwine, y'all. Have a good night.